Verse 17, but the high priest rose up and all who were with him, that is the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. I love that. They get arrested, put in prison, but then an angel of the Lord sets them free and tells them to go out and keep preaching. I mean, I believe that literally happened because I believe the Bible. And it's amazing. It just shows God is so on their side. And God is with them. And I tell you, they're being so emboldened by all of this. And it also just shows that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were just evil and they were jealous of the church. Because people were following the church and not following them. And so here all these amazing good things are happening. People are being healed. People are being cared for. And they don't celebrate that. They're jealous of it. Why? Because they want the power and the control and they're losing it. And so now they're in damage control and they arrest the apostles thinking, okay, we're going to sort them out. And God just sets them free. I mean, it must have been so devastating for these religious people. But they just, they're just so driven by hate and jealousy and murder and they just keep going at it now when the high priest came and those who were with him they called together the council all the senate of the people of israel and sent to the prison to have them brought but when the officers came they did not find them in the prison so they returned and reported we found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors but when we opened them we found no one inside and when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. Before, they would have just gone and grabbed them with force. But now they can't do that because the people love the church and love the apostles and will protect them and actually will stone these Sadducees for taking them by force. They're starting to realize that they are losing control. Verse 27, And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. And you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. I mean, it just shows that they're losing power and control. They don't have the power to control the church. And the apostles are full of boldness. And the people are loving it. And then they play the pity card or the feel sorry for me card. It's like, and, and you intend to bring this man's blood on us. It's like you're trying to blame us for killing Jesus. Well, actually, you did kill Jesus. And when Pontius Pilate washed his hands, he said, this is an innocent man and I'm washing my hands of him. And then these very people said, that's OK. Let his blood be on us and on our children's children. So I don't know if you forgot about that, Pharisees, but his blood is on your hands and you welcomed it to be on your hands. Verse 29, but Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. I mean, he's just so bold. He's not holding back. And every time he says these things to them, they must just cringe on the inside. Their guilt is exposed. They took Christ knowing he was the Christ and they murdered him. And then they thought they got away with it, but he rose back to life, which is even more devastating for them. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. I love the apostles. They're just always preaching the gospel. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit who God has given to those who obey him. And that is those who believe in Jesus, who obey the gospel. They get forgiveness of sins. They get saved. They get born again. And they get filled with the Holy Spirit. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care 
what you're about to do with these men. For before these days, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. And so the apostles stand up to these religious people and they just tell them about Jesus. They're unashamed, unafraid to glorify Jesus and speak of his resurrection. And it enrages these Sadducees, these Pharisees. They become so angry, they want to kill these guys. And then a voice of reason, a wise old Pharisee, he can see what's about to happen, that this is a war that's about to start. I mean, these Sadducees, I mean, they want to unleash all hell on the church, and it's probably going to be a bloodbath, but that would not be good because Rome would not be happy about that, and it would just get very, very ugly. And so he's a little bit of a voice of reason. He recognizes what's about to happen, so he steps up and he explains that whole thing about if it's just in the flesh, it's not going to go anywhere, but if it is from God, You'll just be fighting God. And so it sounds like a voice of reason. They accept what he is saying. And in still enraged, angry with them, they beat them. And they send them off, tell them not to preach anymore in the name of Jesus. And I love the apostles. They run out, they go out, and they rejoicing because they were counted worthy to suffer persecution for Christ's sake. And it just seems that nothing can stop these apostles. I mean, they get thrown in prison, they get beat, they get arrested, they get told not to preach, and, and it doesn't stop them. And I mean, they are dealing with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who are actually quite powerful people, but it, they're not intimidated. They're full of the Holy Spirit, and they got so much boldness, and they're great leaders. And I tell you, this boldness spills over into the church. They're going out, they're preaching the gospel, they're bringing the sick, people are getting healed, people are getting added, and it's just a glorious, wonderful thing that is happening in Jerusalem. And church wasn't just a Sunday event, it was a daily thing, from daily in the temple and from house to house. They didn't stop preaching and teaching about Jesus Christ. This wasn't just religion, this was a lifestyle. They were living the lifestyle of Christ.